Welcome back to another Max Deck Tech. We have another pre-con upgrade guide today featuring Food and Fellowship from Lord of the Rings. Uh, this is our first deck to feature the partner mechanic with Frodo, Adventurous Hobbit, and Sam, Loyal Attendant. They're going to maintain the reins here during this upgrade. We're not switching out the face commanders for anything else. But before we dive on into this upgrade guide, uh, if you enjoy these deck techs, you know, please consider subscribing to the channel. It helps us grow. Ring that bell if you want to make sure you never miss an upload. Let's get started. Frodo and Sam, like many hobbits, are constantly hungry and looking to take some breaks for food. Luckily, Sam seemingly has an endless supply of it. Frodo is looking for us to have gained at least three life before he swings in at our opponents, allowing the ring to tempt him. By turn 4, we can begin to stuff our face and get tempted by the ring and gain all the advantages that come with it. What cards are we taking out to make room for our feats, though? Starting off our list, we have Chromatic Lantern, a mana rock that fixes all of our lands to tap for any color. I just don't think we need the mana rock. The mana base is already solid, and truth be told, we're really just splashing black in the deck, which is predominantly white-green anyway. Following up the Lantern, we have Eagles of the North. This card definitely feels like it's in here to be plain cycled away. While I think the land cycle effects are fantastic, they tend to be stapled onto creatures that are overcosted to play. Essence Warden may seem a bit counterintuitive of a cut. We're all about gaining life, and she's a powerful card that will let us do just that. If we were sticking with Bilbo Birthday Celebrant as our commander, she'd likely stay since his goal is to reach over 111 life. But Frodo is looking to cash in on food's 3 life, so she's just not the best fit. Generous Ent is another land cycler. He does have the added benefit of creating a food on ETB, and if we were playing some Graveyard Recursion, he might get to stay around. But as is, it's just not happening. Great Oak Guardian is up next, and he's kind of an expensive pseudo-vigilance for the board. Holding up 6 mana to flash him in to block a massive swing for an opponent isn't easy to do, and so he had to go. His lane rope is a group hug. You're either paying 3 to find a land, allowing your opponent to do the same thing for 1, or you're paying 4 mana to draw a single card, allowing your opponent to do it for 2. It's just not good value. Lundrovel, Horizon Witness, is going into the protection program. He can grant evasion for a creature each turn, which could help to close out the game. But we have Access Tunnel and Rogue's Passage, as well as some other flying granting creatures to do just that. Orchard Strider seems like our tree folk just can't catch a break. Again, he land cycles and creates not one but two foods on ETB, but there are just more efficient ways to get food here. Pristine Talisman is another mana rock that's getting cut, and the reason is similar to Essence Warden. One life gain per round is fine, but we're looking to gain in increments of three. Prosperous Innkeeper has good company in that boat. Uh, you know, again, we really just want food and not single gains. So, Prosperous Innkeeper, also gone. The last card we're cutting for this is Shire Sheriff. They're kind of weird removal, right? So, they ETB, we sack a token, we exile a thing our opponent has. But only until Shire Sheriff leaves the field. There are 2-2... Two, two, Maybe we swing in if, like, the board's empty. But the second that opponent has any kind of removal, or a board wipe happens, they get their stuff back. So, for that reason, they're gone. What are we adding in to replace all these things and expand our very large feast? Academy Manufacturer is an obvious addition. With how much food we make in this deck, we'll be swimming in treasures and clues as well. Cauldron Familiar is capable of draining our opponents through some nasty combos and can help us end the game. You knew she was here. It's a food deck. Eleanor Gardner is up next. Um, they're going to create food on ETB. And, you know, they're going to help us very quickly ramp up, thinning out our deck, grabbing all of our basic lands. Following Eleanor, we have Ivy Lane Denison, who is here to work with Skillery Oak, who we've also added. These two can create an infinite squirrel army to overwhelm our opponent, and if Mirkwood Bats are already on the field, 
we just went on the spot. Peregrine Took is here to increase the amount of food we're generating and offers us consistent card draw. Samwise Gamgee is here to provide extra food and bring back legendaries, artifacts, and sagas from our grave to hand. Speaking of artifacts, we've added in Clock of Omens, which combos well with a number of cards in here, but specifically is here to combo with Witch's Oven, which we've also added. Utilizing these two cards with Cathar's Crusade and Woodfall Primus creates an infinite combo, which will devastate all of our opponent's non-creature permanents, making it impossible for them to catch up. Are we ever going to actually get to play this four card combo in a game? Maybe. But that's not why the Clock of Omens and Witch's Oven were added in. They're really here to kind of work alongside the, uh, the Cauldron's Familiar. Killer Service is our final new card, which will create three food tokens on ETB, and let us sack those tokens for two mana to create a 4-4 Rhino Warrior each turn. We need to have a bunch of blockers, we're going to have creatures ETBing, which is going to be good for our Mirkwood Bath, and when we sacrifice those tokens, we're also gaining value. We're going to value town, baby. <laughs> but those are uh, those are the upgrades. You know, let me know what you thought. You know, are we missing you know some key pieces to really combo off? Did I take out cards that should have stayed? Which precon do you want to see an upgrade guide for next? Let me know in the comment section down below. And as always, good luck with your builds.